Moments ago, uh, President Trump welcomed Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel to the White House. Look who's with us now. Nigel Farage, he's joining us. He is the man behind Brexit. And by the way, Nigel Farage is no fan of Angela Merkel. That we know. <laughs> all right, Nigel. Um, we would all like to be a fly on the wall of the closed door yeah. meeting in the White House that's going on right now. We suspect it's going to be very awkward. And I personally don't think that anything concrete or productive will come out of it, regardless of what they say later. What say you? Well, I agree. I mean, if there was to be a clash of cultures uh, between Western leaders, this is it. You know, Angela Merkel, who believes in supranationalism, Angela Merkel, who made this call for as many migrants as possible to cross the Mediterranean mm. and come to the European Union, a policy that I consider to be perhaps the worst decision by a European leader in 70 years. Uh, but crucially, defence. Now, Angela Merkel wants American protection through NATO, but she's not prepared to pay for it. 2% of annual GDP is what NATO members are supposed to put into the pot, all right? Currently, the Germans are only paying 1.2%. And I think that what Donald Trump has to say to her is, you can't have your cake and eat it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to have a military alliance with this, you've got to pay the membership fee. That's a confrontation, essentially, uh, which will not be resolved today. How about Germany's no. whopping great big trade surplus with America, mostly in cars, Mercedes, Audis, etc., yeah. etc.? Et That's a huge surplus. Uh, President Trump is not happy about this kind of thing. Again, I sense another confrontation coming there with no decision taken one way or the other at the end of it. Well, the truth of it is, that had Germany stuck with the Deutschmark, they would have a currency very much higher than it currently is. Because they're in the euro, the level of the euro has been dragged down by Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, and all these countries that actually should, should probably never have joined it. So what you've got is Germany through the euro with a very, very, very cheap way of exporting cars to mm. America. And I think that uh, uh, it's, difficult to, to know, it's difficult to know exactly how Trump deals with this. Uh, but there's no question in my mind that what's happened with the European project is it's become totally German-dominated. And, and ultimately, uh, that's one of the reasons why, uh, if we have this conversation in a few years' time, the European Union and the Euro will not exist as we currently know it. Uh, two quick questions, Nigel. Number one, tell me how the Brits feel about President Trump now. Well, I'm afraid to say that there are very, very few figures that are prepared to stand up and defend him in any way. In fact, it, 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 I, I'm, I'm in quite a singular capacity uh, because when he's tried to put in place, you know, this temporary travel suspension, which after all was a list drawn up by Obama, um, you know, the condemnation uh, that has come from the left and the cowardice of conservatives in the UK uh, mean that at the moment he's got very few supporters. OK. Now, the Queen... The second question, the Queen, I, I believe, has given the all clear for Brexit to proceed. A, is that accurate? And B, how long is this going to take to get out? Yes, you're absolutely right. Royal assent has now been given uh, to, for us to go and trigger Article 50. Uh, the Queen, of course, is supposed to be neutral, uh, but she made it quite clear during the referendum campaign that she was very much in favour of Brexit, I'm pleased to say. Did she really? How well, long well, wait a second, Brett. That, that, yeah. I did not know that. The Queen oh, yes. subtly expressed a political opinion? Really? Yes, it's remarkable. I mean, she's been on the, she's been on the throne now for 65 years. Uh, just had her Sapphire Jubilee. Uh, she's a remarkable woman, uh, but she made it pretty clear to people during the referendum that one of the big problems uh, with being part of the European Union is we weren't able to reach out to the Commonwealth and the English-speaking world and have the kind of relationship that we should. The mm. EU has held us back globally. She's the head of the Commonwealth. And, I mean, let's just remember, there are over 50 countries in the Commonwealth. It has a population of over 2 billion. Uh, mm. And they're all countries with whom we have a shared history. So, no, I think the Queen was uh, very pleased with the Brexit result and, and did nothing when there were newspaper rumours and gossip about the Queen's Brexit position, uh, Buckingham Palace did nothing to deny any of it. Uh, as you how long will it all take? Well, look, all I can say is I'm very pleased that I didn't hold my breath after the referendum because it's now been nine months. Um, and even though Royal Assent has gone through, the, we've missed the deadline for this to be discussed by European leaders uh, on the 6th of April. Uh, it may be June. It may be a year 
before the negotiations even start. So, forgive me, uh, some slight degree of frustration. Uh, I do understand, Nigel. I understand these things. Nigel Farage, thank you very much, sir.